exercise 3C on applying Pythagoras' theorem on page 158. So in the last video, we're talking about what is Pythagoras' theorem and can we use it to find the length of the hypotenuse and of the shorter side. But in this scenario, we're going to be looking at it as if, can I use it in a real world scenario? Uh, this is obviously less real world as I expected, but this scenario applies itself as this. If I've got a circle, of course, the projector doesn't look like a circle, but if I've got a circle with a diameter of two centimeters, how can we draw a line that also forms a right angle triangle? Of course, the answer is that we just cut it this way. If you cut it the other way around, that is also fine as well. You'll see that we've got a right angle triangle on the bottom here and also on the top. Can you determine the side length of the largest square? How do we do that? You don't have to say the answer, but how would we find the side length? Well, I know, I know that this length here is what? What's the green li line right there? What's the length? Yeah, what's the length there? How long is it? The diameter is two, so it's just two centimeters. Good. Because the radius would be one, but the diameter is two, so we leave that as two. To find the length of the side, I will do the same thing we did with the last example with the x's there. I know that these lengths are the same, don't I? Yeah. Let's call that x. So I know that x squared plus x squared equals to 2 squared. Sounds familiar? Yeah. yeah? Uh, for those of you that uh, forgot what happened before, we simply add them together to get 2x squared equals to 4. And then we can divide both sides by 2. And therefore, x equals to square root of 2. Have you guys seen this symbol before? The three dots together. Yeah? Yes. That just means therefore in mathematical terms. Okay? Alright, so that is how I'd find the side length. And if I was to calculate the, the uh, percentage of the area, I just calculate the area of the circle and calculate the area of the square. But I'm going to leave that for you guys if you want to do that yourself. Okay? Of course, we're using Pythagoras' theorem in non conventional cir circumstances where we need to be able to identify a triangle and be able to solve from there. So I've got these points here, I've just written down four uh, ideas that we need to make sure we focus on when we're using our Pythagoras theorem to answer worded problems. So first thing you need to identify and draw the triangle. Now, of course it has to be right angle triangle. If you've got a triangle that's not right angle, you've done something wrong as long as that question requires Pythagoras theorem. Second thing you need to do is label the sides with either lengths or pro numeral. Okay? If you don't know what it is, Leave X, B, C, whatever it is you want to use, and then the other ones need to be side lengths. In almost every circumstance, you have two known and one unknown. So two lengths that you do know, and one is might be a pronumeral. Third thing to do is you're going to solve for the unknown value using the Pythagoras theorem. Thank you very much. Uh, and finally, you're going to solve the answer and answer in words. Okay. So I've got an example over here. I'm going to go through it together. I've got an example where I've got two poles which are located 40 meters apart and a rope that links the top of the two poles. Now, for me personally, uh, diagrams are like half the answer. You need to be able to have a diagram that shows the assessor first off, hey, I know what I'm doing, and second off, gives you a better idea of what you're doing as well. So I'm going to try my best to draw two poles that'll do. I've got two poles here. Uh, they are 40 meters apart, so I'm going to go ahead and label that in as well, 40 meters. And it says, find the length of the rope if the poles are 15 meters and 21 meters in height. So this one right here would be 15, and this one is 21 meters. And it says, finally, to answer to correct to two decimal places. Now, what was the first step required when it came to uh, when it came to using Pythagoras theorem, what was the first step? We need to identify and draw the right angle triangle. Where is the right angle triangle? At the top, isn't it? Yeah. So I know that it's asking me to look for the rope. Right, the rope is right here. If I was to take this shape here, that's not exactly a triangle. However, I know that I can push this value up here because I know that this is also 40 meters, don't I? Same thing, okay? Uh, my poles come up as a triangle. Obviously, it's not meant to be a triangle. From there, I'm going to go ahead and draw that triangle out, and it will look like this. Look at that perfect triangle, guys. 
<laughs> that's a right angle triangle. We know that is 40 meters from this value over here. I know that that is my rope, so I'm going to go ahead and label that as an unknown number or pro numeral. Let's call that X. Am I missing anything? What am I missing? Yeah, that's... yeah the other side, right? I know that the other side, this side right here, that has to be the difference between the height of the poles. One of them is 21, the other one's 15, so therefore it has to be? Six. six. Easy work. Now, it's just Pythagoras all the way. I know 40 squared, and you might notice that it's not exactly to scale. That is fine, as long as you've got your values in. 40 squared plus 6 squared equals to x squared. I'm going to go ahead and write x equals to, and I'm going to square root, 40 squared plus 6 squared. Can someone put that in the calculator for me? Thank you very much. X equals to the square root of 40 squared plus 6 squared. 1,636. You got it already? Let's pretend you did that in your head. What was it again? 1,636. 1, exactly. Whole number? No? Some people are getting something different. Let's take it step by step, shall we? What's 40 squared? What's 40 squared? 1,636. Oh, you're talking about without the square. Okay. With the square root, what does that equal to? What's square root of 1636? 40 points. Can you give me the other decimals as well? Just That'll do. Thank you very much. Now we know that's 40.447. The question says round to two decimal places. So you're right. It is 40.45 meters. Am I done? Thank you very much. I need to answer in words. So watch how quickly I write the words, okay? Now, I'm going to write the words over here. Okay. All right, so the rope, the length of the rope, look how fast I write. Length of the rope is 40.45 meters done. That's it. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Full stop. Full stop. Lovely. Yes? In every situation, do you always have to write it in words? Good question. In almost every situation where you have a worded problem, it's beneficial to write in words. Okay? Uh, in, in so, it depends. In most assessments, you won't lose marks for not writing. But if the question says, for example, uh, what is the length of this? And you just write 43, sometimes it's fine. But if it says, find the length of this and this, and you just give the numbers, I don't know which one is which, and I can't, I can't actually give you the mark. Make sense? Good question, though. All right, once you finish, I want you guys to finish off that booklet. There is quite a number of those similar types of questions.